Bill, I'd like to talk about uh, your executive summary tree, which you describe in your book, The Logical Thinking Process, uh, quite well hidden in Appendix B, page 343, but uh, it's one of the aspects of your logical thinking process that I, I think is, is very important, uh, and maybe you too, because the first sentence of that appendix is, ever since Goldratt conceived the thinking process, practitioners have experienced a problem particularly with the current reality tree and future reality trees. Communicating the logic of problem definitions and solutions in a concise but effective manner. And then you go on to the rest of the chapter. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is something that I find is very important because mm -hmm. the uh, time available to explain things to executives is obviously very short. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're not going to have time to read the book. They are not. No. So tell me about this summary. Well, I came to this kind of naturally because I had a career in the military for 23 years before I entered into the university and then into the consulting world. And uh, I did briefings for general officers many times from one to four stars. And I recognized very quickly, I was indoctrinated very quickly in the fact that uh, they want the message concisely uh, couched and they want to get it, get up and get it done and uh, say what you need to say and get off. Uh, I, so the, the the moral or the uh, the uh, the guidance we had was be prompt, be brief, and be seated. And <laughs> I thought you know that's that's really important. And the very first thing that I saw when I learned how to do logic trees was. There is nothing brief at all about either the current or future reality trees. Uh, it takes days to sometimes to put them together and, and scrub them effectively, but it can take a long time to present it in an if-then format. And a lot of people don't, not even just executives, but a lot of people don't have the patience to sit through and mm -hmm. listen to it all. Executives have a particular problem because they have so many things on their mind and, and so many other obligations that when you get up in front of them, uh, not only are they perhaps easily bored, but they're, if you take too long, they're already thinking about the next meeting or the next obligation they have to do, and, and you've lost them. So I thought to myself, there's got to be a way of presenting the results of a thinking process analysis and specifically the current and future reality trees uh, and doing it rather rapidly without having to read through the entire process, mm -hmm. the, the entire tree. So I thought, well, what happens if we build a tree that is a mere skeleton of the completed current reality tree? And so I said, that, that makes sense. Uh, how can I do that in a way that doesn't sacrifice too much of the content. Uh, you want to have just enough that the executive can follow your logic, but not so little that they're not able to make the leap that you're trying to present. So <clears throat> because executives have the attention span of a five-year-old child, I figured that they have to uh, be presented something that they can absorb in probably 15 to 20 minutes. No more than that. Qu questions and answers afterwards, fine if they want, mm -hmm. but but get the message out there in 15 to 20 minutes. How do you do that with a current reality tree that may have 50 or 60 entities on it? Well, I came up with this method that I call the executive summary trees. And it solves what I consider to be the problem of, of communicating the problem or the solution effectively uh, and giving the information only the information that the uh, decision maker needs to render a favorable decision, but it maintains the flexibility to expand to more detail if requested by the executive, but only if requested by the executive. So, how do you do one of these trees? Well, the very first step in the process is to complete the current or future reality tree as best as you possibly can 
uh, in the analysis of the problem. So and it is something where you have to have the complete solution and then as you said that uh, you're going to try to pick out the skeleton or the key right, points. Exactly. Right, exactly. You can't start with the, uh, with the, the skeleton. You have to have the complete tree. Okay. So let's say you have completed a current reality tree and it has about 30 or 40 elements in it. Uh, the first thing you do with that is to isolate the undesirable effects at the top of the tree that are going to be most important to the decision maker. Now, in most cases, this is going to be all of them because with a gold tree, all of those undesirable effects are equally important and you have to get rid of all of them. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you don't reach the goal. Once you have done that, you go down to the bottom of the tree and you identify the critical root causes. There may be three or four that lead to all of these undesirable effects at the top of the tree and you identify which ones they are. In the case of a future reality tree, you would be identifying desired effects and injections, but it's the same principle. You put the outcome of the tree at the top and you put the entry point of the tree at the bottom. Okay, so what I typically tell people to do is you put your current reality tree on the wall where you can see it, and then you start a whole new blank page where you put the undesirable effects at the top and the critical root causes at the bottom, and this is going to be your executive summary tree. Then you take a look at the original current reality tree and you identify the shape of the major paths that go between the critical root causes and the undesirable effects. And you represent these in pencil lines on the executive summary tree. So now what you have is undesirable effects at the top that are connected to the causes at the bottom with these branches that may curve as they shape themselves in the current reality tree. You're going to replicate those causal paths on the executive summary tree. Then you take a look at where these paths converge, these pencil lines that you've drawn. And where they converge, you go back to the original tree, the uh, current reality tree, and you extract the entity from there and move it over the, the uh, convergence entity. And there are going, likely to be several of these. And uh, now you're, what you're doing is you're starting to flesh out the tree, but you're going to stop at a point where you don't have all of that information that's in the current reality tree, just enough for the executive. After you've gotten those convergence points, you take a look at each path between the, the critical root cause and the convergence point, and you identify the key intermediate entities in each branch. There may be one, there may be two, but they are going to be, they're going to represent the longest leap of logic that you think the executive can make if you read those two together with an if and a then. So if you say if the root cause, then this effect, which may be four or five steps above in your current reality tree, but on the executive summary tree, it's going to be the very next one. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And I guess you're saying uh, you give this the, the, the summary where you've missed out intermediate steps mm -hmm. uh, and if they're having trouble following you when you're presenting it that you can reassure them and say well what I've, what I've simplified is I didn't tell you that there were, there were these three things between the two exactly and you do and if you want to do it in a totally professional way you're ready to show them That's that right. that interim those interim steps uh, if they ask for it so so if you identify these key intermediate uh, entities in the branch and you replicate them in the executive summary tree, then what you have now is a final executive summary tree and it may have 10 or 12 entities instead of 30 or 40. Because in fact you're just pointing to the different nodes. Right. Uh, the links between those nodes you're saying trust us, we've thought about it and if initially they say well explain the, the link there Mm -hmm. you, get, you dive down and say, oh, okay, I understand, in, and then they'll trust mm -hmm. you that the rest of the stuff has been uh, put aside because it, but it is there. It, yes, it's pretty close to that, although you never, 
depend on them trusting you. You never yeah. even ask them to trust you. What you yeah. do is you read the cause and the effect, and the effect may be five levels above the cause. And you look for nonverbal feedback on the face of the executive or a comment. And the nonverbal feedback or the comment may express, I don't understand how you got from point A to point B. Rather than explain it to them or say, trust me, what you then do is you pull out a compressed part of the tree, or a, a, not compressed, it's a, a section of the tree mm -hmm. that covers only the space between the cause and that intermediate effect. Yeah. Yeah. So you may have 10 or 11 entities in mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Every one of them is lockstep logic all okay. the way up. If, and, then, if, and, then. Mm -hmm. And you go through it step by step, and you stop when you get to the entity that they had the question about. And then you say, are there any questions about that? And they'll mm -hmm. say, in most cases, if you've done your logic tree properly, they'll say, no, that's perfectly clear now. Then you put that aside, and you go back to the original tree again and pick yeah. up where you left off. Mm -hmm. And, and if they have another question, you pull out the section for that and pop it up on a slide or on the wall or wherever you need to and say, follow me as we go through this. We left off at this point. If this and that, then this. And you walk the steps all the way through until you get to the one they had the question about. And then you stop again. I guarantee you, you do this twice and they will trust you on all of the long arrows for the rest. Because when they see that you've got all of that step-by-step -step logic, every time they ask for it. Okay. So you're, what, what we're saying uh, it's, uh, looks as if it's obvious to you, but uh, as I listen to it, it it's, uh, it's rather remarkable. If you have the, the whole detailed picture, you can mechanically decide what that uh, summary is, mm -hmm. uh, taking from one, one point to another. Mm -hmm and uh, you don't even have to think about what's important or not important in, in, right. in the tree. It's just going to be... Uh, you just follow, That's right, it's mechanical. mechanical you follow it. Because I have learned from presentations of my own, especially logic tree presentations in front of an audience, that when you are standing up there really close to the tree, you may know that tree inside and out. But when you get close to that tree, you get tunnel vision on the entities that you're looking at, and sometimes you forget where it's going, or you lose sight of that fact. So I try to, I try to reduce the tree, well, I try to ensure that the tree has all the entities in a complete sentence. It has to be a grammatically correct, complete, simple sentence. Because I want to reduce it to the point where, when I'm presenting, all I have to read is if, and then the entity, and, and then the entity, then, and then the entity. And the reason I do that is because I don't want to be stumbling for words. I want it to flow off the tongue smoothly and make it sound like I really know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So I reduce it to the fact that everything I need to have, with the exception of the words if, and, and then, is right there in front of me, and all I have to do is read it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to presenting an executive summary tree, uh, typically, I will render the current reality tree on a big piece of paper, like one that might be done in a plotter. Uh, but it's big enough to hold the entire current reality tree. And then I go through and I examine the branches and I start from the bottom one branch and I start counting entities. And when I get up to about 13, I stop and I just draw a circle around all of those entities and then I pick up, go to the next 12 or 13, and I break the tree down into chunks of 12 to 15 entities. Now, why do I do this? Because I found that when it comes to printing trees out on pages, on bond paper, yeah. you can get about 12 to 14 or yeah. 15 entities comfortably on a page without crowding. Mm -hmm. Any more than that, and it gets to be too overwhelming visually. Yeah. So what I'll do is I will take the tree and break it up into those, those pages, if you will, mm -hmm. and uh, I will have the tree ready to present on a, uh, on a projection on the wall or on a screen in 
paginated like that, so I can call that up if there's a question. It, in other words, it underlies the executive summary tree. So if they want page four, I pull up page four and it shows just that section. Another thing I'll do is I will print out that entire tree in all those multiple pages and I will have them in separate stacks, but I will not hand them out to the executive. What I do is I wait until they have a question and then I take the stack that has that page and only then do I go around and hand it out to all of the executives at the table. I don't want them looking ahead. I don't give them a stack that has the whole tree in eight pages because I don't want them thumbing through. I want them paying attention to me and what I'm saying. And if the only thing they have to look at is up there on the screen, I'm going to be able to make eye contact with them and do all of those great TED presentation things that they talk about. So I'll hand out the tree and I'll say, here, follow along if you like while I go through this. And I pop the same page up on the wall so they can either look at the wall or they can look down below. And I read it by number because I don't have any numbers on the entities on the executive summary tree, but I have all of the entities numbered on the handout pages so that I can say, starting at the lower left with number 201, if and then, so forth, all the way until I get up to the point where I, where I answer the question. And I stop and say, are there any questions about that? Okay, if you'll put that aside for a second, we'll continue. They have to put it aside because I'm going to back to the executive summary tree and they don't have any more pages. At the very end of the presentation, however, when it's all done and they've listened to me, I will take all of those, tr all of those uh, pages and I will staple them together and say, here, take this back to your office with you if you'd like to look at it in more detail. And now they have as much as they want, but no more than they need. So that's the way I do executive summary trees, and I have, I've done a few of them myself, uh, but I get feedback from people who have used it, and they say, oh, it works like a champ. I don't lose the audience that way. Mm -hmm. So that's how the executive summary tree works. But I have to emphasize again, you have to have a Loctite current reality or future reality tree done first. All the logic has to be there. It doesn't do you any good to construct all of this detailed logic if you can't communicate it and have it heard and understood. But it doesn't do any good to try to do that if you haven't got a good, complete, solid message. So they go hand in hand. Okay, well, thank you very much. You're very welcome.